Hi, my name is Bambi Edland and I am this year's Summer Reading Club artist and I'm going to show you a little bit about drawing animals. If you look through some of the work I've done, you'll see there's very few people in there. I much prefer drawing animals. But I've been doing it for a long time and I'm often asked how I manage to make them look like cartoons but also properly proportioned and I'm going to show you how I learned that and how you can learn it too. So in my work as an artist, I do a lot of different things. I draw a lot of dogs. Um, I have a Bernese Mountain Dog and I sell um, merchandise and prints with my dogs on them. And I also sell dog towels and some other fun dog things. I also do illustrations for a website called Chewy.com. They have a pet food site as well as a site called Pet MD, which is veterinary information for animals. So I draw a lot of different dogs and cats and things for them. I really like the challenge of drawing different breeds of dogs and cats. They're, there's a lot of similarities, but dogs look so different from each other. And I like the challenge of trying to draw different types of dogs. I also draw for kids books and sometimes I draw kids but they always have animal friends with them. There's never any drawings of mine that have no animals in them. It's pretty rare. Um, I drew illustrations for a book called What a Waste, Where Does Garbage Go? All about garbage dumps around the world and how garbage is being a problem but also being some solutions that are taking place. So. It was very interesting. Um, illustrating books is really fun because you get to learn about a lot of different subjects that you might not normally learn about and draw things that you might not normally draw. And drawing garbage was way more fun than I would have expected. So a career as an artist is a lot of fun. It's something different all the time, which I really enjoy. So. The way that I've gotten better at drawing animals is by drawing them a little more um, anatomically correct at first and then turning them into my more cartoony style. So I'll show you a little bit of how I do that. Okay, so if I'm going to draw a cat, then I would start with a photo of an actual cat. This is a good way to learn how a cat's bones look. So drawing the back hip and the back leg, you see the bone comes down out to the back and then down. It's maybe not how you would picture it in your head. So it's always good to look at photos of an actual animal and see how their different limbs look on their body and that will help you draw them a little bit more accurately. This one's back hip is, should be down a little bit. So let's move it down here and then so their knee is actually up at the top and then their leg goes out to the back and down and that's always going to look more like a cat. So then I put in the spine and a good rule of thumb is that there's three circles, the head, the back hips and the front hips. And in almost all animals you'll find that this works, that if you draw circles for the back hips, the front hips and the head, then you can rough in the body and this way you're just getting it a little more correct. So if I wanted to learn how to draw cats well, I would start this way. I would draw the guidelines, the circles, and then I would just rough in their bone structure and then the outlines. And I do this a lot. Um, I might draw them a whole bunch of different times from different photos just until I know that I've got the the way a cat looks down pat because sometimes it's not how you see it in your head. So if you look at this cartoon guy however you'll see that his bones have him upright like a human. So humans have top shoulders, bottom hips, their arms, their legs, their head, so it's very similar to a cat, but our bones move in a different direction. So the way I would do it is use what I learned from drawing the cat and draw it in a human form. So 
Here's, I'll show you an example. So if I'm starting to sketch this guy out, just roughly sketch him. I'm going to have him drawing, or have him standing upright like a human, but I'm still going to do, see the back of the leg, that sort of back knee joint bends backwards. And it's those little things that make him look correct as a cat, even though he's cartoony and kind of rough. So then I put in the actual final lines and yeah, he comes together pretty quickly. Sometimes maybe I'll want to give him goofier eyes or a top hat or whatever you want to do with him. It's your art and it's up to you, but that's a good place to start. I'll show you some other animals. So for a bunny, for instance, I would do the same thing. I would start out with his hips, drawing his legs, his spine, his head, and the three circles are very obvious with the bunny. And then this is going faster than normal, of course, but just to show you. So I would draw in his body based on those three circles for the head, front hips, and back hips, and just draw him over and over. And then I would get a little bit my more cartoony style and then I might make him draw him upright like a human. So it's just a matter of drawing him over and over and eventually you get the proportions right and then you draw him walking his pet squirrel. So you can try it with all different animals. Horses, same thing, the three circles, draw the way the bones go, and if you use that to start your drawing, then it's going to be much more accurate than if you just draw it free form. So it's a good way to get your hand doing what your brain wants it to do. Um, when you first start drawing, it can be really difficult because your hand doesn't do exactly what your mind wants it to do. And it can be a little bit frustrating, but just have fun with it and trust that the more you do it, the better you'll get. Okay, so let's take what we've learned and try it out on some dogs. So I'm going to put in the head, the back hips, and the front hips, my front shoulders. The three circles, I always start with the three circles. And then I just start roughing everything in. So I usually start with the back legs for whatever reason and then rough in the torso and then I start with his head. So with the dog you'll see the snout part that sticks out the long part of their nose is always outside of the circle. The main circle is the main bulk of their head and then the extra parts like the nose that sticks out and the ears they'll fly off of the back. They'll sit outside of those circles but if you use the circles to show you roughly where the head is going to be then it's just a good guideline for for drawing and as you get used to it and you do it a little bit more you'll start to change the proportions in a real life and some of the ones that we did earlier the skull the head circle was a lot smaller but when I'm do, doing um, cartoony dogs, it's always fun to have their heads a little bit bigger. You'll notice that cartoon animals always have bigger heads, and that's kind of what makes them cute and funny looking. So I like to keep the head a bit bigger. So there's a dog. He's going for a jog. So let's try using these circles and make the same, use these same circles and make the dog do something different. So maybe the back leg is going to be up a little higher this time. Let's see. And put in a back leg. This guy is going to be jumping for joy a little bit. Maybe leaping like he's dancing a little bit of ballet. So I put in the tail. Sometimes it can be hard to figure out exactly where the tail should be. This is the fun part about drawing on an iPad, is you can try it in a few different positions until it's how you like it. 
and it's pretty easy to back up. But you can do the same thing on paper, and drawing over and over on paper is a good idea as well. So in this case, we're going to have his head pointing up, his nose pointing up, and his ears flowing out behind. That's maybe a little bit long. Let's make the ear not quite so long. Sometimes I just keep trying different shapes. If I'm doing it on paper, I just draw it over and over on this in the same spot. But on an iPad, it's easy to erase the final one. So we're going to have him doing a little ballet leap with his eyes closed because he's having such a lovely time. And then we're going to give him graceful arms out the front and back. So it just is the same three circles in the same spot, but he's doing a completely different thing. But it, the fun thing is it looks like the same dog. So now let's have him just standing still. So that back joint on the leg, when a dog is standing, that sits on the ground. But when they're walking, they're walking on the front part of that foot. So that's a little exaggerated the way I do it when I'm making him draw like a human and that's part of what you get to do as an artist. You get to decide how you want to make them stand. But by having that back leg look like it does in real life, it just makes him a little more like a somewhat realistic looking dog. I'm going to make this guy kind of sad. Maybe he's thinking about what he's done. Poor guy, we'll put his back leg in there. There. So that's three different dogs in three very different positions using the same three circles as a guideline. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had fun learning a little bit about how I draw my animals. And I hope you keep playing with your pencils and paper and draw a lot and draw the things that you love. That makes it much more fun. And the more you do it, the better you'll get. Stick with it, and I hope you all have great fun being artists. Thank you.